This is an honor which I never thought I'd have. My math is not my strong point, but I think it was 51 years ago that I was graduating from this university. And I never, of course, thought that I would be standing here as an honorary uh, degree recipient. I'm so grateful to the University of Toronto for giving me this degree. And I'm delighted that I'm receiving it with the Trinity and in his students, because I think one of the great strengths of this university, and it has many other colleges, they are communities where you meet people who are like you and unlike you, and I think that is one of the great strengths. And I'm very touched and pleased that I'm back at my old university. I have a long connection with it that goes back before I was born. My grandfather came from a farm in southwestern Ontario, the youngest of eight children, and came to medical school here. My parents met here. My sister was here. I have nephews and nieces who have been here, and I hope perhaps more will be here in future. I've been delighted to teach in the history department, and I spent five very happy years as provost of Trinity College. We're all getting, and I'm speaking now to those who are graduating degree today, we're all getting degrees here today, but mine is a lot more fun because I haven't had to work for it. <laughs> you have, and I want to congratulate, congratulate you all as others have. And I want to also congratulate, as previous speakers have, all those who kept you going. It can be a long haul, and there can be times, probably in the winter when you have lots of assignments due when you don't really feel that it's all worth it. And you know how many people have helped you through, your family, your friends, the people who listen when you said, I don't want to do this stupid essay, I don't want to do this stupid assignment, and they've encouraged you to keep going. Um, they've fed you, they've comforted you, and they are here today, many of them to share in your success. At convocation addresses, people usually give lots of advice, and I can tell you, you won't remember any of it. <laughs> when I graduated, I didn't remember a thing. I don't remember who was the honor honorary graduate who, who received an honorary degree. I, w I looked it up. And it could have been Morley Callahan, who was a very famous Canadian writer. It could have been Zoltan Karai, a very famous Hungarian composer. I don't know. The whole thing went by in a sort of blur. So I'm not going to give you a lot of advice. And that will let you off the hook for looking as if you're listening to it. <laughs> but what I will do is wish you two things. I hope that your futures will hold for all of you two very important things. My first hope is that you will realize that although you have passed a very important milestone in your lives, your learning will not end here. It doesn't really for any of us. You're on a journey that should last until the end. I hope that you will keep your curiosity, that you will learn new things and acquire new skills. What you learn, what you acquire in the way of skills may be things you think you need or things that you just want to because you like them. And I hope that you won't ever let anyone say it's a waste of time to learn something that doesn't seem to be immediately useful or to acquire a skill that doesn't seem to be immediately useful because I can tell you, you never know. You never know when what you learn and what you can do will come in useful. And you will never get bored. That is the great thing. There is always something more to be learned, always something more that you can, you can do. And my second hope is that you will find, or perhaps you, most of you have already found, something that you really care passionately about. It may be one thing, it may be several things. It will, of course, be people in your lives, but I hope it will also be an intellectual pursuit. I hope, for example, if you do English literature, that you may continue to love that, but that you may also discover philosophy. Or if your passion now is economics, you may find over the years that you love something like opera that there is always something new out there that you can discover and learn that will give you great enjoyment. I've been very lucky in my life because I discovered very early on that I loved history. I loved the details of what people in different periods did, what they ate, what they wore, why they did certain things, why they believed certain things, what games they played, what amusements they had. Of course, the past is a different country. It is different from the present, and that's what makes it so fascinating. But sometimes, sometimes, there are those moments where you connect with people in the past, and those are extraordinarily rewarding. In a way, you're all connecting with the past today because you're sitting in a convocation hall where so many people have gone before you, wondering about the same things, wondering about what their lives are going to be like. And those moments of connecting with the past, I think, are enormously important. I think we also look at the past to try and ask, how did we get 
to where we are? How did we become what we are? How has Canada become the country it has? How have so many stories of peoples from around the world become part of Canadian history? And I think that is also enormously important. And although I don't always admit it, but I will today, I love history because of the gossip. You can't make it up. There are so many extraordinary people. How, do you, how can you find more interesting people than Catherine the Great, our own William Lyon Mackenzie King? If you're ever bored, go online and read his diaries. They're absolutely riveting. Or someone like Charles Darwin. In a way, history for me is like reading Hello Magazine every day, but with better stories often and more interesting people. History is important. It is important because it helps us to understand ourselves. We're all of us in our own ways products of our own histories. Certain things have happened to us. We've grown up in certain communities. We've encountered others from different communities. All that becomes part of the fabric of our lives. And I think we need to know what has happened to us, what has happened to our communities, what has happened to the world in which we live in order to understand the world in which we are living. We have to, I think, also understand the history so that we do not let others tell us that history is about this, that history is a particular story. We have to be able to challenge that. We can see how often stories are told that will lead people to do things to their neighbors which they shouldn't do, will lead to hatreds. We need to be able to challenge those stories. And so I think history is both powerful, it's important, and it has to be treated as a very, very dangerous, potentially dangerous subject. George Orwell said, who controls the past controls the future, who controls the present controls the past. And I think that is worth remembering. And all we can do is challenge that. History should help us not to have a simple view of the world. It should help us to ask questions, as so many other disciplines do as well. We should be able to say, is it the case that we have to go down this path? Do we have to get into a confrontation with another country? Do we have to make these decisions? History helps us to raise questions, helps us to realize that not everything has to be the way it is, helps us realize and reminds us that there are other types of society in the past, other ways of doing things, and that is really important. I think we need it more than ever today because we are living, as we all know, in a rapidly changing world, a potentially turbulent world, Canada, I think, is an oasis in this world, but oases have to be protected. You can't keep drawing on the well, you can't keep hoping that the waters that feed the oasis are always going to be there. You have to replenish them. And so I think we all have a responsibility for our society. History will not tell us what to do, but history may help. And it may help us to challenge those who try and impose versions of the past on us, who say it is destined that the United States and China, for example, will fight each other because that always happens when you get a rising power and a declining power. We have to challenge those stories. We have to challenge the stories that say Christianity and Islam can never be compatible. They have never coexisted because that is wrong and we need to know that it's wrong. And so I think what history can do is just open our minds, help us to keep asking questions and that's what I hope you're all going to be doing for the rest of your lives. Keep up the challenges, keep up asking the questions because that is what it is to be a good citizen and that is what it is to, the, to replenish the foundations of your own society, to help keep them strong, to help keep moving ahead. So I've given you my two hopes, that you will find something that you really, or many things that you really care about passionately and want to keep learning about, that you will continue to be open to new ideas. But I, there's one more thing I want to wish you, and of course that's the most important one right now. I want to wish you a very happy day filled with celebrations with all those close to you. You have really earned it, so have a wonderful day.